Hello friends, I'm Vartika Jain. Welcome to my channel. This is Epitome Cards and Crafts. And a special welcome to all of you because in this video I will be giving you the answers to the frequent questions or not so frequent questions that you have asked me recently. In this video I will be talking about the basic tools, techniques and anything that is required as a beginner in card making and crafting. So if you have any questions, please put them down in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. The technical ones I already mentioned I will be covering in the next videos. Uh, first question was what kind of uh, the papers that I use, the designs that I use uh, on the papers, are they handmade or are they taken from internet? Yes, I do uh, use both the things. I take up inspiration from internet, I buy papers online and yes definitely I make my own papers. Those are lovely handmade papers. In fact, I have a series of about four different sets in which I have 16 different designs of uh, pattern paper that I have released under the brand of Epitome Cards and Crafts. I will share the pictures and the links where you can purchase them online with me. So you can check them out in the description box. Apart from that, I would want to show you the kind of papers that I'm talking about here. So, I'm just showing the smaller versions. These are the kind of papers, I'm just showing two sheets here. These papers are available in the market, this kind of paper. So they are available in different sizes. You get them in A4 size, you get them in 6x6, six six, you get them in 12x12s, and you have different sizes available for the different kinds of papers. I make my papers in A4 size because that's the standard size available. So. Okay guys, this is exclusive footage because I haven't released these designs in my uh, pattern paper series and these are some things which I am planning to release but let's just say this, you are getting a quick look at this. So this is some kind of uh, watercolor theme I am working on. This is a bit denim style. And then I have this, this paper. And similar to it, this is the one and this is the one. So I've been working on some watercolor papers because they are great, great, great options for lettering, for layering, for using as backgrounds and you know just pasting your own photos and uh, create layouts for that. And I also have this vintage paper that I'm planning to uh, release in the market soon. But I thought that this video would be the perfect time to share the ideas that a crafter goes through and creates. And so if you have any feedback about any of these papers, I would be more than happy to acknowledge them, to work on them. If you have any themes in mind that you would like me to work on, so that would be amazing. I like vintage paper a lot and I uh, love drawing, uh, you know, different things with them. So this is another paper that I have worked on. I wanted to show you. This I have used uh, creating some different techniques and I used it as a background for a card. So this is a card and inside you have just regular watercolor spray paper. This is also handmade and this is also handmade. So I do create my own paper whenever the need requires but definitely there are options available in the market if you cannot create your own papers you can definitely go ahead and buy them online on different platforms. You have Amazon, you have Crafters Corner, you have different crafting uh, platforms as well, Amazon and uh, Itsy Bitsy you have. So there are different places where you can buy this kind of papers and work with them. So uh, coming to the next question, sometimes uh, like uh, you know the basics, uh, something like the basics, you need to get started with papers which pens and even the gum, regular gum doesn't stick and it might not work well. So regarding the basic tools for making a card, you do not have to go anything that is fancy. You don't have to buy expensive tools. You do not have to invest a lot of money. Whatever you have at home can be super doable uh, and you can create amazing, in fact, professional level crafts with that. So the tools that I use and I would recommend you using while you're making a card is what I'm going to share now. When it comes to your paper, you do not uh, have to uh, think again. You just uh, you do not have to think what kind of paper I should buy, where will I get it, or what kind of expensive uh, paper will I have to purchase. You do not have to. So I use this uh, A4 sheet ivory board paper. You, 
can go to your local stationer and ask them i need an ivory uh, sheet ivory board paper they will provide you this this is uh, most commonly used by people who are into fashion designing they use these kind of sheets for designing and drawing their uh, you know uh, models as sheets they are thick in gsm they are 280 to 300 gsm thick card stock and they are super good for your card bases and this paper is not like it it won't go anywhere the the material is really good really good so do not use chart paper or drawing paper for card bases use ivory board paper this is a very sturdy paper that you can use for your card stock now coming to the pattern papers i already showed you uh, they are a bit flimsy you can actually fold them and they are not that hard or they are not that sturdy but yes uh, you get card stock that is 300 gsm as well so you can experiment find them out online and definitely you can work with that now uh, coming to the tools that we use talking about pens talking about the glue talking about the scissors i have uh, basic tools that i was mentioning to you so uh, when it comes to uh, your first few tools that you need for card making you will definitely come across your scissors for cutting your scale for measuring your pencils your pens your glue so these are the basic tools that you need for card making when it comes to your scissors i use these basic scissors that come in the market it's from the gorilla brand and they are very uh, handy in using they have good handle hold and i definitely would recommend that if you're using fabric as well when you are using uh, your when you're cutting ribbons or something like that keep a separate fabric scissor do not use the same scissors for cutting paper and the same scissors for cutting fabric because they both uh, the scissors do not yield to uh, both equally so when you're cutting fabric keep that scissor separately i have a heavy duty uh, big scissors for this i think this is from munich Munich brand. Munich is also a good brand that I have used, but recently I found these Gorilla scissors and they have been very useful. They are very durable and long lasting, so you can try them out as well. These are not expensive. I do not know the price exactly, but the, these are really economical. You probably might have them at home. So, and when it comes to your scale, when you are measuring your cards and you are drawing lines on that, please prefer a metallic scale. I do not recommend transparent plastic scales because sometimes when you are using your cutters or you are uh, striking that line, uh, plastic scales get you know bumps on them. If you hit them too hard on a surface, you know they will become rough edged and the uh, corners also break. So they are not very durable. These metallic scales are really durable and very very easy to clean. So try. So you can try this. If you're not using a scissor, you can definitely use a cutter. I use the Canix uh, cutters. They are very good. I have this one which has this black cover going on it. So there is some lighting issue. I'm sorry for that. But these cutters are really really good. They are very comfortable in holding. They are not sharp. They do not make your hand hurt. So you can use these as well. They come in different colors if you are uh, particular about that. When it comes to uh, your glue, please do not go anywhere. Do not think about any glue. Just get yourself one bottle of fairy glue. That's it. That's it. That's all that you will need to stick anything. When it comes to sticking fabric, yes, you can upgrade yourself to different kinds of glues. But when it comes to sticking paper, any kind of paper you need to stick a heavy embellishment wooden embellishment you want to stick any heavy uh, paper item you want to stick papers together do not look anywhere else i have tried different kinds of glues i have tried liquid glue uh, some different brands i have tried uh, what kind of, what you'd say double sided tape i have tried score tape i have tried various tapes they are definitely they def definitely have an edge in scrapbooking but if you are looking for a Uh, beginner's guide for sticking anything this is the gum that you need in your life ferricol is perfect for sticking anything i have tried different things over the period of time uh, the you know the strength of the bond of that glue it wears off for ferricol it doesn't 
it stays for as long as the product or as long as you do not burn that paper on it. So uh, Fevicol is something that you need and nothing else. When it comes to pens, I have got the question what kind of pens I use on my card. So see, uh, I use a lot of different styles of pens. I use uh, micro tip pens, I use brush pens, I use metallic pens, I use, um, I don't know, I use a lot of pens, I use markers, I use different kinds of pens. But if you are beginning, please just make sure that you, when you are writing your uh, messages or you're writing on the card front, any sentiment, if you are particular about what kind of pen you want to use, you just need one pen that is waterproof ink or water resistant ink. So that is the only thing that you have to take care of when you are using any pen. So that is, it does not smudge, it does not wear off, it does not fade, it does not bleed. So this is one pen that you can find online or you can find in a local shop. I found this uh, recently. It's a Rorito Forcer Gel uh, Permanent Waterproof Ink. Rorito Forcer Gel Pen. And you see this? I don't know. Uh, so this pen is, I think, for 10 or 20 bucks, nothing more than that. But the thing that it has is it is waterproof ink. So what you are looking for while writing your messages is waterproof ink. I prefer black pen, so you will rarely find me using any other color pen. But you can definitely try red, blue, green, black for color variation. Apart from this, I also recommend using Uniball pens, they are not that uh, waterproof, but they are water resistant. Some of them are definitely waterproof. I, yes, this is waterproof and fade proof, Uniball pens. So this is Uniball I Micro and I also have a Uniball I Fine. So there are two uh, thickness, tip thicknesses, uh, which are fine and micro. Apart from this, I have this one favorite pen that people keep asking me. This is a V Pilot pen. This is a V Sign pen. It has a broad tip and it really makes my lettering blossom, I think. It, it just flourishes my letters. So this is a bold black pen. It also comes in green, blue and red. So you can try that. And to finish off my lettering or sometimes, you know, give that bling to my letters, I use these Zig, Zig painting markers. So they are, they come in three shades. Uh, they come in two shades like uh, golden and silver. I do not know if it also comes in bronze, but I've only seen these two. So zig, mar uh, zig markers, these are paint pens and they have this kind of brush tips. So you can see and they are super good. They are super, like I love them. I haven't gone ahead and found any other silver or golden pen once I found them. You can also find those light glitter pens uh, in Uniball, Uniball Signo. Uh, so you can use them as well. They are like the thickness of your regular gel pen. You can use that for light lettering or light message writing or uh, writing on shrugan envelopes or something like that. They also do not fade off, but you have to let them dry. When it comes to uh, your papers, your tools, etc., this is that you will need. If you want to professionally pursue card making and you want to do it on a regular basis, this is one tool that you can go for. This is a cutting mat. You can find it online or you can also ask your local stationers to get it for you. Uh, they can you know, contact their wholesalers and get it for you. This is a silicone cutting mat. And when, it, when you start uh, crafting or card making professionally, this is something that people go for because it is... Uh, mat where you use your cutter and the, there are no marks left. Do not use a cutter on your tables or your sheets or your marble floor because then it leaves those scratches and also destroys or harms the tools. So use this kind of cutting mat to cut down papers and you won't have anything to destroy like that. You can always cut the paper, you can destroy the paper but not the surface that you're doing it on. Okay. So that was the first question or a mix of first questions that I answered. I hope I have answered most of them, like what kind of pens you need, what kind of paper you need, what, how do you get to uh, the pattern papers, where do you get them and apart from that, yes, about the glue as well. So I have covered a few questions here. For, uh, okay, there is one more question about papers. So the question was basically, what type of paper do we need for different things? 
So when it comes to different things, I would be talking about card making, I would be talking about gift wrapping, you can talk about uh, decorations, or you can talk about a few other things in this. Just give me a second. Okay. <laughs> so I've kept everything here, created a sort of small setup. So struggling through my stuff. Okay, yes, so I have written some points in my notebook. I write all these things so that I do not forget them. So this is the kind of notebook I use, a random notebook. Not a crafter's notebook, of course, but I do not like wasting paper, so I use whatever I get. Yes, so uh, when it comes to uh, using paper for different things, for cards, I told you that for the base, you need ivory board or heavy cardstock. For the pattern papers, you can definitely use thin paper or thick paper as you please. When it comes to envelopes, if you are making an envelope for yourself, thin paper does the best work. So, envelopes just add elegance to your product. So, you don't have to have them really hard or thick. You can go with thin paper, you can choose thick paper as well. Lights back and it's a good thing. So, for gift wrapping, you can use various kinds of papers. You can use cellophane, you can use transparent decorative paper, you can use tissue paper, you can use uh, the matte thin gift wrapping paper that is available in the market. A little pricey as compared to those glossy sheets, but definitely a pick because you get a lot of designs and a lot of variety in that. And for boxes, for if you are making handmade boxes, please use heavy duty cardstock. And okay, so I think I have covered what kind of papers you need for different kinds of things. If you have any other question regarding this, please put it down in the comment section. I will look into it and get back to you. Coming to some of the other questions which are really challenging and a good one. So, this question has been asked by a fellow crafter. Her name is Rita. Uh, she, she asked that when we buy pattern papers, so we all have gone through this as crafters, there are some designs which are not that good. Okay, let's be honest. Every design cannot be, wow, it's so pretty. I am going to make everything with this design. No, it can't be. So you buy that in packs and there are a few designs in your stash which do not gel well or which do not give you that kind of a vibe that you want to use them. So what do you do when you have that kind of uh, pattern paper available in your stash? So, if you do not want to use it in card making, if you do not want to use it in your best projects, that's okay. But you can definitely use those papers and I'm going to quickly show you how you can use them. So, there are a few projects I just wanted to share with you. And let me show you. You might say that these papers are good but for me they weren't that great. Okay. So, here is the first project. This was some animal print paper with golden glossy print. So you can see there is a tiger, there is this, I don't know, camel. No, it's an elephant. So, so there are different kinds of animals. I'm not a person who really loves animal prints. So I just went ahead and made these super, super cool envelopes. I have a few more, but I'll show you these two here. And these are really, really good for sending out your cards, for sending out gift mail, for sending out goodies that you want to send to your fellow crafters or packaging your products. So something fancy is always beautiful and pattern papers, you might not like it, the other person might like it, so you can experiment with that. Apart from this, I have also made smaller envelopes. So these prints are something which were from the baby collection. I did not quite like this print, so I made small envelopes you can you know put them together like this and create a small small you know, note card kind of a thing you can experiment as much as you like so there is no limit to that I also made a few tags out of the papers that I did not quite enjoy or they were scraps for me so I made this to and from uh, tags here from on some I just gave that good metallic uh, silver metallic border. So these tags are really good when I am sending out gift mail or sending out couriers to my customers. They are also available for sale so you can check them out on my WhatsApp catalog and I'll share them on Facebook as well. 
apart from this i did this whole punch thing whole punching and kind of a note card from my scraps and from papers that i really did not like so these are very good for adding to your gifts so you have packed you have beautifully wrapped a gift box and then you just you know put a note card in that so you can experiment you don't have to be very particular about the prints that you have on it and they are really awesome apart from this you can also use them on your bookmarks so i have a bunch of bookmarks here with me i like lettering on them the names of people so i have kept them like this a bit subtle in their backgrounds and then this is some scrap paper then again this is some beautiful pattern but i did not quite like it and i was not able to use it on my project so i just went ahead and add them to my bookmark so they they are a great way to use your paper so i have a different bunch of them not quite using them so i just added them to uh, the bookmarks so one of the a uh, few of them i'll show you these are from epitome series guys these are some of my beautiful prints beautiful beautiful prints so i did a lot of alphabet ones because reading is something like you use your bookmarks for but you can always color them in the in the beautiful colors you like and make them your own so i have these two prints here and i have more but you will have to explore and some beautiful projects not just you know side projects are like uh, like the tags and bookmarks you can actually make some albums also out of it but before that i'll just show you some rosettes these are amazing projects when you want to use your pattern paper because once once you see once you make them into a rosette they have already have a texture to them so you do not have to worry if pattern is nice or not and you can stick another decorative paper on it to uh, in center to make them look really really pretty and these are very easy and you also have a video on this on my channel you can check this out in the description i will uh, add that link and this is the project that i was talking about your mini albums so i did not like i'm sorry i did not like the prints uh, of this paper so these were these were too basic or this was too glossy and shiny so i was not able to use it on any project so i made this little album out of it so i just punched out some elements and then uh, tore a newspaper a dictionary paper and then wrote love on it and i made this album it also has pockets so if you want to see it, it has this pockets kind of thing and each page has its own pockets now i added small elements to it and see how many folds it has one two three four four and this is all out of a 12 inch by 12 inch sheet this is how you can use your uh, not so cool pattern papers and make something really nice and use them so you can use your uh, not utilized pattern paper like that see you can use all sorts of papers it's just about the color theme that you've chosen so here it is vintage brown yellows and black and you can choose any kind of theme i have a video on facebook where i conducted a live session for about an hour where i showed how you can make a basic card you can check that out because that will cover your basic tools basic techniques how to balance your card and everything in that so do not forget to check that because it's a very valuable uh, video where i have shared my secrets how i do things when i make a card okay apart from this there are a few other questions regarding pens regarding for calligraphy regarding cutting papers and a lot of them i will answer them in the next video because i think this video has taken too long so please stay tuned and i will get back to your answers really really soon and i will answer all your queries please do not go anywhere and click on that bell icon uh, when you subscribe to my channel so that you do not miss out that second part and i wish to upload videos every friday so don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel i hope you loved this video there were useful tips that you got and if you have any questions and if you like this video please please put it put it in the comments thank you thank you thank you so much for joining in and i loved interacting with you i hope to interact with you more and happy crafting have a good day bye